Here in beautiful San Diego is the home of the most successful team in American Football League history, the San Diego Chargers. For six exciting years, Charger games were played at Balboa Stadium. 1967 finds the Chargers unlocking the door to a new $27 million dream home, the San Diego Stadium. To exemplify the thrills awaiting fans in the new stadium, let's turn back the clock as we present... San Diego's season begins with a gallop as the Chargers take on the Buffalo Bills at Balboa Stadium. In the first quarter, Jack Kemp's pass is picked off by Kenny Graham at the San Diego 6 and returned 21 yards. The Chargers burned by the Bills in the 1965 AFL title game are anxious to settle the score today. Under center for San Diego, John Hadle. Hadle going to the air. Finds Gary Garrison for 36 yards. It was the first pro catch by the sensational rookie end from San Diego State College. This is Hadle calling the shots flawlessly and passing to Lance Allworth for the touchdown that gives San Diego a 7-0 halftime edge. Needing 13 yards in the third quarter, Mr. Cool, John Hadle, gets 42 with this pass to Jack McKinnon. The play is sandwiched between field goals that gives San Diego a 13-0 advantage. So far, the Chargers are beating the Bills to every punch. Bud Whitehead puts the skids to a fourth-quarter Buffalo drive by intercepting a Kemp pass on the eighth and returning 61 yards. San Diego's high-powered ground machine swings into action. Behind the blocking of Ron Mix, fullback Gene Foster pulls his way inside the 10. On third down, Hadel neatly fakes a handoff, turns, and fires to Jack McKinnon for the touchdown. Chargers out in front by 20 to nothing. The Bills have to punt. Dropping back to receive is Speedy Duncan. After breaking away from an initial wave of tacklers, Duncan returns all the way, 81 yards for a touchdown. It's the highlight of San Diego's rousing opening game victory over the defending AFL champions. The Chargers try for two in a row at the expense of the Boston Patriots. First quarter, nighttime action, no score. There's a Gene Foster picking him up and laying him down for 15 tough yards. Hadel with a slant in pass to Lance Alworth sets up the field goal that gives the Chargers a 3-0 lead. Boston has yet to cross the midfield stripe. Babe Pirelli puts the ball in the air, and San Diego's Kenny Graham intercepts. Graham returns 32 yards for a touchdown and celebrates by heaving the ball into the stand. The defensive sparkler puts San Diego on top, 10 to nothing. 37 seconds remain in the half. San Diego on its own 44. Can the Chargers get another score? Hadel under pressure, throws to Gene Foster for a first down. <laughs> 26 seconds to go. 
Excitement runs high as Hadel drops back and aims for Gary Garrison. Garrison makes a great catch for another first down. 18 seconds to go. Here's the payoff. Hadel goes to Allworth for the touchdown that makes it 17-0 at the break. The explosive chargers turn Jim Allison loose. Allison from San Diego State breaks five tackles en route to a 61-yard touchdown that cements San Diego's 24-0 win over Boston. The AFL's most bitter rivalry flames anew with the arrival of the Chargers in the Oakland Coliseum. San Diego maintains a two-point edge over the Raiders until the third quarter. John Hadle helps widen the margin with a scoring pass to Jack McKinnon. Chargers 19, Raiders 10. Art Powell, one of the league's foremost receivers, is being covered by one of the league's premier cornermen, Speedy Duncan. Duncan snares a pass bound for Powell to register his third interception of the game. The Chargers in field goal range call on Dick Van Raphorst to oblige. It's up, it's good. San Diego 22, Oakland 10. In the fourth quarter, the Chargers flank Lance Allworth to the near sideline. Allworth, double team, has to fight to get downfield. Then makes a vital catch for a gain of 43 yards. A pitch out goes to the elusive Paul Lowe. The AFL's all-time leading ground gainer moves the ball down close. Eight yards from pay dirt. This is Gene Foster taking a pitch out around the left side for the TD. San Diego stays unbeaten with a 29-20 win over the arch rival Raiders. Returning home to San Diego, the Chargers welcome the new Miami Dolphins. In the second quarter, the upset-minded Dolphins drive to the Charger 20. From there, Dick Wood rifles a pass to Carl Noonan in the end zone. The touchdown gives Miami a 10-0 lead. San Diego Steve Tensi heats up along the sidelines. Watch number 56, Steve DeLong, cause a fumble, which teammate Rick Redmond grabs out of the air. Redmond bids the Dolphins good afternoon, racing 58 yards for San Diego's only score of the half. In the second half, Steve Tensey takes over at quarterback and pumps new life into the Chargers. Gene Foster is on the receiving end of this pass, good for 28 yards. A member of the taxi squad in 1965, Tensi's appearing for the first time as a professional. Allworth grabs this bomb for a 44-yard touchdown. The passing show by the six-foot, five-inch sharpshooter from Florida State continues. It's big Steve to Gene Foster, who's behind everybody for 63 yards. San Diego surges ahead, 29 to 10. Later, with a chance to get more points, Tensi cuts loose with his fourth touchdown pass. This one to Willie Frazier. The timing was just perfect on that play. The Dolphins defender never really had a chance. San Diego rips Miami 44 to 10, then moves into Shea Stadium in New York for a showdown with the New York Jets before the largest crowd in AFL history, 63,497. Dick Van Raphorst's third field goal accounts for all of the San Diego scoring in the first half, as Joe Namath and company hold a 10-9 edge. A Namath pass intended for George Sauer is pilfered by Speedy Duncan at the New York 47. But Sid Gilman's team loses ground, and John Hadel is faced with a difficult second and 41 situation. Watch Hadel's faking, then the blocking on this one. Hadel passes to Keith Lincoln, and the chase is on. 
Walt Sweeney gets the first block. Then Ron Mix throws a nifty at the 45. Jim Allison, number 32, takes out two defenders. Gary Garrison gets a piece of the last defender, and it's a 67-yard TD, putting San Diego ahead 16 to 10. But the Jets battle back to tie on Emerson Boozer's end sweep and win the game 17-16 by making the conversion. San Diego falls into a two-way tie for the Western Division lead. A capacity crowd and a one-man flying circus herald the Chargers' arrival in Buffalo's War Memorial Stadium. Bills quarterback Jack Kemp tries to break the game wide open, but Kenny Braham makes a leaping interception. The Chargers haul out their offensive material. John Hadle's bullet passed to tight end Willie Frazier goes for 17 yards. The drive which began on a spectacular note ends in similar fashion as Willie Frazier grabs Hadle's rollout pass for a touchdown. The Bills bounce back to tie and the Charger road caravan swings into Fenway Park, Boston for a collision with Big Jim Nance and the Patriots. In the first quarter, John Hadel passes to Lance Allworth. The brilliant flanker falls in behind Walt Sweeney. And once in the clear, he leads his secondary on a merry chase to the end zone. Watching Lance Allworth in action is in itself worth the price of admission to Charger games. Allworth's grab sets up a field goal. Sid Gilman's team is playing catch-up football. Hazel and Allworth pool their talents again for a tremendous 66-yard touchdown. But the Patriots go on to win, knocking San Diego out of the Western Division lead. After three weeks on the road, the Chargers are going home with United Airlines. United Airlines flies eight of nine AFL teams throughout the season. Among the first to board United Jet for the return trip to the coast are center Sam Granison and defensive end Jim Griffin. And now it's on to California via the friendly skies of United for a tussle with the Denver Broncos. Here's Ozzie's marching chargers in a pregame pageant. In the first quarter, San Diego spots Denver seven points. A crack block by Ron Mix brings Gene Foster for 37 yards to spark a comeback. The Charger player's average age is the second youngest in the American Football League. Gene Foster, who is only 23 years old, nabs a Hadle pass and he gets 19 yards. In the second quarter, Denver gets off a booming punt. Speedy Duncan, the league's foremost returner, gathers it in on the 24 and rambles for 29 yards. One yard away from a touchdown. Hadel steps back, fires a clothesline shot to Gary Garrison. Garrison's TD draws San Diego even with Denver at 14 all. Later, the Broncos kick off to the Chargers. San Diego's Paul Lowe and Dave Plump are waiting at the five. Lowe takes it, and Paul proceeds to dazzle him with footwork as he returns 54 yards.
John Hadle, who will take over the league passing leadership today, spots big Jack McKinnon for 28 yards. From the one, Hadel gets great protection. He waits for Jack McKinnon to get free, then hits him with a touchdown pass. San Diego roars into the lead. Sure to be a crowd pleaser in the new San Diego Stadium is tackled Steve DeLong. The 255-pound youngster from Tennessee lowers the boom. Later, San Diego's big defensive line is given the acid test. Denver with a first down inside the Charger five fails on three attempts to score. On fourth down, the ball carrier is dropped in his tracks. The valiant goal line stand enables the Chargers to sneak by Denver 24-17. Perhaps no one player symbolizes the explosiveness and professional capability of the San Diego team more than Lance Allworth, generally regarded as football's finest receiver. Allworth's desire centers not on gaining personal recognition, but in winning games for the Chargers. And oh, how he can make those circus catches. Everybody likes Lance, except defensive backs. At Shea Stadium, Allworth made a shambles of his much publicized duel with defender Johnny Sample. Allworth nabbed 10 passes for 149 yards. A 9-6 runner in his college days at Arkansas, few ever succeed in defensing him one-on-one. -on -one. Allworth is six feet tall, weighs 180 pounds. When he came to the Chargers in 1962, Sid Gilman switched him from running back to flanker because of his size. But he shows here when he gets the football, he knows how to go through that broken field. A perennial all-pro selection, Lance works hard at mastering his pass patterns. The 26-year-old pride of Little Rock, Arkansas, reaches a milestone in his brilliant five-year career in a game against the Kansas City Chiefs. It's a picture play all the way as Allworth scores his 50th touchdown. John Havel will throw 23 touchdown passes in 1966. Most of them go to the inimitable Lance Allworth. Ron Mix helps Lance loosen up for a game with the Chiefs at Balboa Stadium. Allworth, who is enjoying his finest season, proves to be big poison to the KC secondary. The Chiefs yield a total of 127 yards to the Chargers star. Allworth becomes the first player in the history of the AFL to gain 1,000 yards in four consecutive seasons. The biggest bauble of all for Allworth in 1966 is winning the AFL receiving title. Allworth's totals reach 73 receptions for 1,383 yards and 13 touchdowns. Any wonder Lance Allworth rates superstar billing? After that 24-17 win over Denver, the Chargers met with three straight defeats. On the brighter side, hard-running Paul Lowe had his biggest day of 1966 against Oakland. In 10 carries, Mr. Perpetual Motion grinds out 125 yards. Paul can't wait to sink his cleats into the new San Diego Stadium turf. The Chargers, with a 5-5-1 record, take on the Houston Oilers at Rice Stadium. In the first quarter, Lance Allworth races downfield to make a fingertip catch of a John Hadle pass. He outpedals a secondary to rack up a 78-yard touchdown. 
how do you stop forward? In a repeat performance, Lentz gets behind everybody to make an over-the-shoulder grab of the leather. San Diego is on top, 14-10 at the half. In the fourth quarter of this topsy-turvy affair, Hadel launches a charger assault with a 23-yard completion to Willie Frazier. Hadel has learned to live with pressure. He avoids a rush to lob a touchdown pass into the hands of Gary Garrison. Two minutes to play, Houston leads by one. Hadel, masterminding a do-or-die drive from the Houston 36, passes to Gene Foster. And Gene slashes his way for 17 yards. Third and eight at the 12. Hadel comes through in the clutch with a touchdown pass to Jack McKinnon. San Diego wins it, 28-22. The Chargers begin their last stand at Balboa Stadium with the New York Jets furnishing the opposition. A little razzle-dazzle is employed by San Diego. Gary Garrison's on the receiving end as the Chargers try to take the lead away from New York. The handoff goes to Jim Allison who gets a clearing block from Walt Sweeney and scores. It's 14-9 San Diego. The defense gets a breather while the offense continues to sparkle. Paul Lowe sprints 57 yards, just missing the touchdown. San Diego's leading ground gainer finishes the job. After the Jets close to 21-19, John Hadle displays his versatility by bootlegging 20 yards. Watch the offensive line block as Hadle decides to run. Paul Lowe gets another block near the goal and the payoff is a touchdown. San Diego's fortunes declined after losing to the Jets earlier in the season, and now New York must pay. Hadel pinpoints Jack McKinnon for 36 yards. The Chargers' exciting, wide-open style of play is what draws the fans. It's Hadel and McKinnon for another touchdown. Chargers 35, New York 19. San Diego's pass defense, led by Kenny Graham and Speedy Duncan, allowed the fewest completions in the league. Duncan makes a spectacular interception and then returns 14 yards. What Duncan started, Paul Lowe finishes by high-stepping nine yards behind a block by number 60, Eddie Mitchell, for the touchdown. The Chargers win big over the Jets, 42-27, and go on to finish the season with a seven, six, and one record. A 175-pound package of excitement is Leslie Speedy Duncan. Watch him fly. And on pass defense, bat down an aerial. An interception and a spectacular touchdown run. Duncan's electrifying punt return was the highlight of the rain-soaked American Football League All-Star game.
You'll want to be in the plush new San Diego Stadium next season for all the action and thrills of Charger football. The stadium's unique form is designed for maximum visibility and comfort for the fans. Four-tier seating for 50,000, parking for 15,000 cars. America's newest sports facility has everything. And the Chargers are determined to make 1967 a championship season. To go along with their veteran offensive might, defensive strength has been added in such players as six-foot-eight-inch rookie Ron Billingsley from Wyoming, Scott Appleton and Johnny Baker from Houston, and all-league defensive end Tom Day, number 88, from the Buffalo Bills. Shown here, putting the skids to a Houston drive. Thrill to the action in the new San Diego Stadium with football's most exciting team, the San Diego Chargers. <laughs> 